recording my first podcast here. Go take a drink of water. Mm. Hello everyone and welcome to Paper Cuts from Scripts. Insert slogan here. I didn't think of one. Do we need a slogan? I don't know. Whatever. I was actually at one point going to call this the whatever cast. Because whatever. But then I also kind of thought like the potential of naming it something that's not just word cast. Because that's what a lot of people do. I kind of like, believe it or not, I kind of took the naming scheme from like emo bands from like the early 2000s. Like Panic at the Disco and shit like that. I know it sounds like a stupid inspiration. But whatever, I don't care. And I was initially worried about doing this. Because typically podcasts have more than one person. There's got to be like some kind of dynamic, right? It's how I always felt. But I figured I might as well experiment and test with the idea of doing it by myself. And because of that, I did have to think about some things I wanted to talk about. Of course, not scripted. Because if you script it, you might as well not be making a podcast at that point. Has anyone ever done a scripted podcast? Is that a thing? I don't think so. And I feel as if that would just remove the fun out of it. It's like saying, I'm going to go to improv, but then it's like you have that screen that you read stuff on, you know? It's like when you look at a news report from, like, Fox News and find out 90% of the stuff they say is actually from, like, a fucking teleprompter or whatever. It's like, they don't know what they're doing. They're just fucking reading the thing and being a pretty face. I don't have a pretty face, and even if I did, you can't see it right now. This is an audio thing. Yeah... (laughs) You think if I had a pretty face, you think I'd be here? No. I'd probably end up like Logan Paul and be making a bunch of vlog videos. I'd have a million (laughs) dollars. Oh, Jesus. If only it was that simple. You know what? Might as well be at this point. Uh, I did think of things I wanted to talk about. To sort of like test the waters. I don't want to like plan like the entire thing out. Only uh, some ideas. God, I just fucking died inside. By the way, I wasn't sure whether or not I should do this. Um, But I thought of the idea of, like, what if I drank during the podcast? Would that be fun? I also thought about naming it after that in case it becomes, like, a regular thing. But then I'd also get concerned. Like, some people would be like, oh, this guy's an alcoholic. Look, I don't drink that much. Not anymore, anyway. I used to drink, like, every fucking day. I'm not gonna lie. There was a point in time where it was, like, a year where I drank almost, like, every single day. And even I was getting concerned. I was like, am I getting addicted? Am I becoming an alcoholic? An al- alcoholic? <laughs> but then, like, two months ago, it just randomly stopped. Like, it was, like, almost two months since I had a drink at that point. Or, like, had a full night of drinking. It wasn't just, like, one drink. I don't know what happened. The thing is, my sister and my mom, they actually told me that that's probably what was going to happen. Because that's what happened to them. There's a point in time where they just drank like fucking madmen. And then they just randomly stopped. So, okay, if if this is going to become a regular thing in that regard, I should at least tell you what I'm drinking. What I do, I've explained this before on a Red Room Plus, but I don't know if that's out yet. Because I just recorded that yesterday. I recorded two yesterday, and I forgot which one I mentioned it in. I think it was the Alice Madness Returns one, I can't remember. But anyway, what I do is I have my little skull jug right here. It's made out of plastic. Can you hear it? Oh, yeah. And you can hear it. And then I just get vodka. It's a Vladimir vodka. It goes like wine and spirits. It's not open right now because of the quarantine. So I stocked up on that. I have like two big old fucking things of it. I just start pouring it. Three, two, one. Sit it down. Fill the thing with ice like almost up to the top. And then fill the rest with Coke. A lot of people say that's not a lot. That's the point. I don't want to get fucking smashed after like one drink. And I hate the fucking... Not necessarily the taste of vodka. It feels like it burns. You know what I mean? I hate, like, alcohol going down my throat. Like, if I'm going to have a drink, I don't want to taste the alcohol. Like, not at all. Like, here's the thing. If I go to a bar and ask for, like, a Jack and Coke, and I can kind of taste the Jack, if it's, like, evened up, but, like, 50-50, I'll fucking deal with it, because I'm in public. I ain't going to be a little bitch when I'm in public. I'll be a bitch in my own goddamn house if I wanted to be. (laughs) That's why I make these drinks. I also sometimes do these things, oh my god, you do not know how good this tastes. Oh. Alright, so, have you heard of a white Russian? I don't know if this is exactly that, because everyone seems to have their own different view of what a white Russian is. So what I do. Okay, so, here's what you need. You need a Kahlua. That's one type of alcohol. You need Baileys and milk. Alright, so here's the thing. 
put a little bit of Kahlua. Just like, I don't know, do what I did with the whole 3 2 one, and Just as much Bailey's. And then fill the rest up with milk. And mwah, it tastes like you're drinking chocolate milk. It is good. I love it. Problem is, Bailey's and Kahlua, they come in smaller bottles. And they're expensive. Like, if I was a millionaire, if I was, like, fucking Donald Trump and I got a small loan of a million dollars, I guarantee you I would do that, like, every day. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I'm not made of money. I was one of the people who had to get a stimulus check. Ugh. Which I've been doing very productive things with it. For the most part. I got a new chair. You see? You, you, do you hear any squeaking? No? Good! Because I got a new chair from Staples, and it's a really good chair, and I like it. It's comfy. And now, and it's like, <laughs> what else did I get? I got a new external hard drive, six terabytes, because my first one was getting full, and I need something for, like, the Jet Ray Archive and game footage, because that takes up a lot of memory for some reason. Uh, got this metal thing right here. It's used to hold stuff. That was, like, ten bucks. This is a very good purchase. I've been very responsible. But I'm also going to reveal that no, I'm not being responsible too because uh, I'm going to complain about something. I don't know if this is because of the whole coronavirus thing, but goddamn, like, almost a week ago, I bought, like, a new shirt off a of shark robot. I got a new ground shirt because I'm an animator on new ground. So if you guys want to see my stuff, it's here available on this channel on YouTube. But if you, if you're on YouTube right now, uh, this is going to be on both YouTube and new grounds. It's going to be on new ground sound thing. And this is going to be a video on YouTube. But anyway, if you're on YouTube, you can go to my new ground, see all my animated stuff. My most popular thing is Mario says a bad word. <laughs> that's all. That's all I need. <laughs> But anyway, I, I, I animate on Newgrounds. I love Newgrounds, and I want to support my independent friends. So I got a Newgrounds shirt, and it's taking forever to get here. I got this app called Arrive, and it helps you fucking track packages when normally you can't fucking see it. But it said it was supposed to be here Monday. You know, like Monday the 20th, it is now the 22nd, and it has not moved from its original destination. It says it's currently in Springville, Utah. Springville, like the Simpsons. And it's been there since the 18th. I'm wondering what the hell is going on. I just want my goddamn new ground shirt. I just want to show Tom Folk that I mean business. <laughs> like, really? Senpai will never notice me if I don't have my new ground shirt. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus fucking Christ. It's it's obnoxious, too, because I just, I just got the shirt... It's like four days, people. Four days since it's been stuck in Springfield, Utah. And I have my new ground shirt. Tom Fulp is never going to notice me. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, God, the ice is all melted and now the drink's watery. Oh, that's good. That's great. That's great. That's, that's fantastic. All right, so how about, how about I get into a little bit of a story time? This is something I've been dying to talk about on an online presence because it pissed me off and I need everyone to know about this, okay? I'm, I'm that person. I'm that kind of person when I want to be. But there was no other way I could get it out um, besides this. And it makes you think, oh, is that the reason you started doing the fucking paper cuts from Scripps podcast? No, no, not really. It's just convenient. <laughs> but... Oh god, this is horrible. And this is gonna come out out of the blue. I could make this like the point of adding like a clickbaity title. So if you saw the title, and if it's like a really clickbaity, questionable thing, you know why, and I guarantee you there's gonna be quite a bit of dislikes because of that. But hey, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna fucking try, you know? I try my goddamn damnedest and I get overshadowed because everyone does fucking clickbait shit. And here I was being fucking, you know, being proud of my stuff and doing regular titles. Then as soon as I started doing, like, slightly clickbaity titles, the views started going up. I'm like, God damn, people, is this really all you need? I didn't think it was this easy. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> yeah, I can see people either being annoyed by this or maybe thoroughly entertained. I'm hoping it's the second one. I'm pretty sure it might be the first, though. Anyway, moving on. So... For those who don't know, I am a supporter of Gay Pride. Um, I'm what you'd call a straight ally. 
That's the technical term. I didn't think it was a term. I didn't think there really needed to be a term for that sort of thing. But hey, the more you know, and I've, and you know, that needs to go without saying, right? Most people support it these days. But I want to also bring up that I've been supporting it for a decade now, since middle school. And there's a reason for this. It's going to sound like a stupid reason, but shut up. The reason was in middle school, I met my first crush. Now I gotta say, she was a cutie, alright? But I had to discover that she was a lesbian. Now, I was disappointed, don't get me wrong. But, you know, I decided to be like, you know what, accept it, support her. And that's what kind of kick-started the whole I want to support gay bride thing. Now, who knows? Now, after that, um, I started doing all this kind of stuff to uh, try to support that kind of thing. Um, you saw on the Jitray archive for the Smash Machinimas that I used to make, I tried doing this thing called Gay Pride Brawl, uh, and it was good at heart. It, it didn't go anywhere, and I'm kind of glad it didn't, but it was a good intent, intent at heart. But anyway, that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is that we had this particular teacher. He was my history teacher. I thought he was my English, but then I remember my English teacher was someone different. But anyway... He was also my homeroom teacher. And this guy was a fucking prick. I'm not going to say his name, alright? Because I'm not even sure if just saying Mr. and his last name is, is going to be enough to, like, dox a person. I'm not even sure if he's working at the school anymore. Uh, even though I probably... It feels as if, in a way, I kind of should say his last name. Because I really don't think someone like that should be working in a school facility. But anyway, back to the story. He was a massive goddamn prick. And let me tell you why. There was this moment where we all just kind of realized, this guy's homophobic. So what happens is, in homeroom, I don't know, we're just before class even starts. He does this thing in homeroom where he puts on the projector a news report of, like, a gay pride rally. He's looking at the screen, he has his fingers together like a fucking supervillain here. And it's like, he doesn't say anything, the video's just going, we're all looking at it confused. Everyone's waving their rainbow flags, woo! All that kind of stuff. He pauses it, shuts off the projector, and I shit you not, he turns around fucking supervillain style in his chair. He swivels around, looks at us, and says, and I quote, So what did you all think of that? And we're all just like, what? What? <laughs> so, because we're all fucking scared shitless by this fucking guy, a lot of us just go, oh, well, we don't really care. And it's just, like, the, the most neutral answer ever because we're fucking petrified of this guy right now. We don't know what the fuck came over him. <laughs> but anyway, only three of us uh, in the class said, hey, they should be able to like whoever they like. And uh, for those kids, he sneers at them. He leers as if those are going to be the last moments of their lives. And I should know because I was one of them. He leers at me like he's gonna kill me by the end of the day. He goes... And then class starts, like, regular. And then I hear, like, after that, that ended up triggering, like, a whole bunch of conversations. And apparently this isn't the first incident in his other history classes that I'm not in. Because, you know, same history teacher, but different students come in. Um, apparently he likes to go after and bully the other students who were experimenting with that sort of thing. And I, that's terrible because that's a very important time for a student, especially in middle school. It's a point in time where they're experimenting and learning more about themselves. And here's this guy just fucking targeting these kids for experimenting all this kind of stuff and figuring out who they are. And so it just gets worse and worse. And the worst thing that happened... Oh, no, the fucking leering wasn't the worst thing. Oh, God. So it was the last period in the day. It was, I forgot what it was called, but it was just like, you go back to homeroom for half an hour. That's all it is. You can work on homework ahead of time. You can do all this kind of stuff. You just have to sit there for like half an hour until the bell goes ding and everyone leaves to the bus. But what happens is uh, my phone's on my desk. It doesn't make any sound, but you'll, you, you'll see as to why I bring that up. So this is a point in time where I already started Gay Pride Brawl and started talking about it in school. And the teacher, he looks over at me, and he's like, Hey, Zach, come here. So I'm like, oh, okay. Is it because my phone's on my desk? So I pick up my phone, have it on my side. I don't look at it. And I just walk over to him, and I'm like, yes, sir. He's like, well, the hair just trying this thing called uh, the gay pride brawl. And I was like, well, yeah, yes, sir. I feel as if it's very important. I, you know, I, feel, I just feel as if it's something worth 
uh, talking about. And then he fucking loses it right then and there. He goes, well, you don't see drinking fountains out in the school hallway that say gain straight, do you? And deep down in my mind, I'm just like, holy shit. I don't say anything because I'm petrified right now. What is this guy going to do to me? There's another teacher standing beside him because there was always, like, at least two teachers in a room. And you can see, like, the side, like, you can see that she wanted to say something, but she didn't. Probably because she was in the same situation as me. So she just has her hand in her face like, oh, my God. And what's he do? He snatches my phone out of my hand, opens the window, holds it out, and says, what would you do if I dropped this? And, of course, I'm just like, what? 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 Because I'm just dumbfounded by the situation here. This guy just gets so mad at me for doing something completely unrelated to his class. <laughs> Compares homophobia to segregation. Threatens to throw my phone out the window for simply doing something for gay pride. And the other teacher's just having her fucking face in her palm like, what the hell is this? And I think that's when he realized he took it a step too far because he looks back over at her and just hands me back the phone and says, go back to your seat. And I never told anyone this because I think I just forgot about it like instantly. I thought it, like, it was a point in time where I thought it was normal this kind of stuff happened, you know, <laughs> not worth bringing up. Then I realized, no, no, it was very much worth bringing up. I should have. He really shouldn't. I I'm sorry. This may come off as rude but i don't think people like that should be in that kind of field uh, teachers who are just going to go out of their way to like a target people for supporting something like gay pride and who are also experimenting with that kind of stuff and also at that age where they're experimenting and discovering more about themselves i don't think someone should be in the teaching field if they have those kind of fucking have those kind of fucking thought imagine if a racist person was at a, was a teaching a kindergarten class and you had, like, also, like, a bunch of little kids who were uh, African-American. Would you not think that the racist teacher would also target them? See, you shouldn't have anyone that's any kind of hateful in those kind of schools. I don't fucking care. Like, they could be the nicest person ever, but at the same time, as soon as they cross that boundary, I feel as if they should just pick up their shit and go, alright? Because that is going to ruin a kid's life, honestly. If you just keep letting people like that be in that position. Oh, Jesus. It's so mm, bizarre. It's just like, when it comes to teachers, I've noticed that it's either like 50-50. Either you have a really nice teacher, they do different activities, they actually engage with the students. And the other 50% of the time, it's just either put something on like the fucking PowerPoint presentation. Or just fucking... Do nothing and get mad. Just get furious for no reason. No, guys, let's get mad. Let's get... I'm someone who's supposed to be teaching kids, but I'm furious. I hate kids. I don't even know why I'm here. I've heard, and I don't know if this is true, that for many people, becoming a teacher is like, uh, sort of like a last call sort of thing. Like, my life is over, I might as well just be doing this. I don't know if that's true. That's what I've heard a few times. Then again, considering there's a whole degree in teaching, that does kind of throw that out the window. But at the same time, I have to wonder, if you get a degree in teaching, how is it that there's so much of a fucking ratio between, like, really nice teachers that actually do their job and fucking bastards that don't know what they have to do with? Like, you go to college for four years, and you just go ahead into your room, put on a PowerPoint presentation, don't give anyone any time to fucking put on notes... And then you just go ahead and be like, all right, we're done. Get the hell out and have a fit. Because one of your students supports gay pride. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Mm. And I've always noticed it's always a middle age balding man that is like the most angriest person. Because I had a similar incident. Like, years later, it was my last year of school. This was 2014? I believe so. Anyway, I had a similar teacher. He was also my homeroom and my first class. And I forgot, was he also history? No, no, no. The history teacher in that school was actually cool. Whenever it was someone's birthday, he would get on his hands and fucking do a handstand and sing a happy birthday song to, like, the one student's. 
And he was really nice. One, it was a point in time when I was struggling mentally, and I put a note on my desk that was very vague, uh, let's say, and I disappeared. And what he does is he halts the class, gets the other teacher to start doing the thing, and he goes out searching for me. And it's like, he was the coolest fucking dude ever. I wish I remembered his name. I can tell you the school he worked at. Uh, it's not the same school as the homophobic teacher. It, that's a completely different school. The school the awesome history teacher worked at was uh, Centralia High in Washington State. He was fucking awesome. It was like my, I'd have to say he's one of my favorite teachers next to my uh, algebra teacher from Spring Grove Area High School. Because he was also fun, too. He also made things. If you're a teacher that makes a subject fun, the kids will want to learn. But anyway, back to the subject. He was an English teacher. And he was one of those kids that just put on, like, a PowerPoint presentation. It's like, all right, look at this. Click. Take notes. Okay, click. Wait, wait, I didn't take notes. I don't give a fuck. Click. And, of course, everyone fucking hated him because he clearly didn't know how to do his job. So, here's what happened. Uh, me and another uh, kind of student, I, I kind of call this upon myself, I was being an ignorant little fuck, we were just kind of like, he was being rather mean to another student, so we are just kind of all making grumbling noises, and he looks over at us, he connects the two dots, and he pulls us out, and he's like, you two making fun of me in there? He's like, making all these noises, mimicking me? And for, like my friend at that time, um, she does, uh, she starts pulling the fucking tear act you know what i mean where it's just like i don't want i don't feel like dealing with this and i don't want to fucking risk getting into more trouble i'm just gonna start crying <laughs> well the drunk white girls do when they get pulled over by a cop after they leave the bar anyway <laughs> moving on uh, what i do is i start becoming like smart ass because i'm fucking had it with this dude and i was like oh yeah you mean like this <laughs> And he's like, go to the fucking counselor's office. Okay. I was wearing a scarf at that point. And what happens was, is that a scarf got stuck in the counselor's door and tugged on it. And it kind of went around my neck. And I thought it was him. So I was like, did you just pull my scarf? And you know what he says? He says, no, but if I did, I would pull harder. Oh. And then immediately we both go into the counselor. Uh, I sit down. He gets to the door. He gets to the counselor's actual door. Uh, how it is that there's like a counselor's office, and then there are multiple different rooms for each individual counselor. And he goes in and says, "I've had it with him." He's like, "I did nothing to him." You probably think, "Oh, you were just a troublemaker at that point." No, no, no. He was just fucking awful. He was the worst kind of person ever. So he, they completely changed my uh, first uh, period teacher at that point. It was after that, it was after that year I realized I wouldn't have the credits to graduate, so there was no point in staying in school, because even if I did, I still wouldn't have enough credits unless I get perfect straight A's and I flunked that semester. So I, I just dropped out and got my GED years later. I had my GED, by the way! So I'm not a failure, but I think I still deserve a graduation ceremony! Give me the funny square hat! Why would they do that for fucking GED people anyway? Really. I feel so left out. <laughs> Sad. That's the only thing that I regret about school, is that I wish I made it to the end just so I could have a graduation ceremony. Because I didn't make it to that. I didn't. I'm rather envious of the people who did. I mean, hypothetically, there's nothing stopping me from just going on Amazon, buying a gown and a hat, and just walking around my fucking trailer going, I graduated, look at me! <laughs> I could do that. Why not? It is something that I would do, honestly. Not even because of that, but also because I'm fucking bored out of my mind from this quarantine. And also, I love dressing up. A lot of you guys already know this because I have so many characters where I have to dress up in costume. Like, you, you guys see, no, like, there's Normal Horse, there's Nat the Banana Ghost, um, there's all the other characters in Normal Horse, the Pig, the Pug, the uh, Gorilla. I have a fucking full-ass gorilla suit. You saw the Octopus that I put in the coronavirus video that I made. That one's my favorite. And I finally got another costume, and I don't know, Normal Horse, I don't know if Normal Horse 5 is out by now. It should be, I don't see why it wouldn't. If not, it should be coming out soon, because I just recorded it, like, yesterday. Fully recording everything. 
Um, and I don't want to spoil what I got. But anyway, I just love dressing up. I still want, I have an entire closet full of different costumes. Oh yeah, the shark costume uh, from my um, the best thing of my life video they made like back in Texas. Um, I even keep some of my old work shirts when I leave a different job. Like my Sunoco shirt, I still have that if I want to do something with that. I, I have my Regal Theater shirt if I want to do something with that. I still have my Soul Eater jacket that I got from my anime phase if I want to do something with that. Uh, what else is there? Um... <laughs> well, anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, I love watered down shit. It tastes delicious. It tastes great. Mm. <laughs> I love it. I don't drink as much. This is my first drink, and I'm not even halfway through it. And I've had it on my desk for like an hour. That can also explain why it's all watered down. Like I said, I don't drink as much as I used to. Like last year and the year before, I was drinking constantly. Like, nearly every day. And if I wasn't drinking, it was because there was something keeping me from drinking. Like, oh, I have work the next day. And even then, I'd probably have, like, a drink or two. Not before I go to work, like, right before. I'm, I'm not going to drink and drive. Often. If you know what I mean. But if, what I mean is that, like, before I go to sleep. Because what I do is that, like, when I get home from work, I do my own thing. And I wait till it's, like... Nine, ten hours before I have to leave for work. And then I go to bed then. Then I wake up and spend the rest of the time getting ready. And that's what I do. I drink before that. Before the slumber. There was one time I did make a huge mistake. Uh, I did that one time when I was working in Sunoco. This was like a, a two years ago, maybe three. Uh, I can't fully remember. I think it was three years ago. <laughs> this is the funny... This is when I was living with my sister as her roommate. Uh, what happens is, is that... I drank, and I went to bed, and my alarm went off. Bring, bring. Oh, I gotta go to work. I gotta get ready to go to my favorite place in the world, Sunoco. It's like Disneyland. Then I get up, and I realize my legs feel like jelly. Oh, fuck. It's, it's okay. I'll, it'll take a, I'll just wake up, and I go to the bathroom. <laughs> and then I start getting ready. I wash my face with a Stridex pad. I start getting ready to brush my teeth. I open the drawer, which all my stuff is in. Then I just collapse. I just go... <laughs> right into the ground. I broke the fucking drawer. It's dented down and it can't close. <laughs> and here's my sister trying to do everything she can to not burst out laughing. She's like holding her mouth shut. <laughs> she, she hears and sees everything. <laughs> It was, I'm not gonna lie, it was hilarious. And then I realized, oh fuck, oh fuck, uh, I can't go to work. So I try to call last minute. Go along with that. And what happens is that she, like my but my manager, she says something that at that point makes me think that it's okay to stay home. I don't know. Maybe I was maybe I was just so desperate that I just kind of picked a piece. I don't know what happened. I just heard her say a few words. Like I'm in the clear. Real turns out I'm not. So I woke up the next day, and they're like, hey, where were you at work? Huh? Well, fuck. You hear that? That's what you call a toilet making random noises. It's doing that thing where the water just trickles. I don't know what the noise is, actually. I know a lot of toilets do it, so I know it's normal. My toilet's trying to communicate with me. You talking shit in there? And see, you understand the joke? Because there's typically shit within toilets. And if a toilet were to talk, it would typically be talking with shit in its mouth. I'm a comedy genius, I know. <laughs> I'm one of those people that laughs at his own jokes. Oh, come on. If you can't make yourself laugh, what's the point? People always give a lot of people shit like, oh, this guy laughs at his own jokes. Yeah? And? At least I can have fun, you dingus. You nimrod. You nincompoop. Mm. You butthole. I'm ne I never hear anyone call each other buttholes anymore. It's such a funny term. You're a butthole. 
Hey, McFly. Marty McFly, butthead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why no one calls you... Because asshole is so much more, I guess... I don't know. It rolls off the tongue better, but I, I like the term butthole. Butthole, butthead, buttfucker. The word butt's just nice, alright? But, see what I did there? I would also say that yeah, there probably is um, another word that's just as good. But I just can't think of it. I thought I did, but I didn't. Shit. How long have I been recording? Half an hour. We're making good time. Time's flying, my boy. Now, here's the thing I gotta also mention. My sister's coming over this Friday. I asked, hey, you wanna record a podcast with me? Because we've been talking about this again. She wants to do an online presence. <laughs> I'm dying. And she said, oh, I'm busy at work. I'll come over Friday. But the problem is, that might be when my roommate's coming back. And I don't like to record this kind of stuff with my roommates here. We, we tried... I tried to talk this kind of stuff out with them, being like, hey, would you mind if I uh, record while uh, you're here? Uh, I'll promise not to be too loud. Um, if you saw the Red Room Plus for Kingdom Hearts 2, Roxas' story, uh, you'll see that I, you'll hear that I'm a little more quieter than usual, and that's exactly why. My roommate was sleeping, and I did not want to wake him up. Be a little bastard. There's a point in time where near the end, during the Axel fight, they did wake up because it was like 6 a.m. at that point, and they went to the bathroom and started coughing. I don't know if you heard that. I think I cut most of that out. I mean, I, I don't think I heard it because when I was editing it, I couldn't hear it. But I knew I heard it when I was recording it. Uh, so, now a change of plans. I'm coming around. My roommate's out for like a week, so I have to place to myself. So I'm taking this as an advantage. You fucking just go away and record like a fucking madman and just do everything I can. I was able to do normal horse. I was able to record a media video. I'm, I'm able to record the podcast. And it's a Red Room Plus. It's okay. I hope you all like it. Bad news is I haven't been working on Alice Dark since since. Which, that is, like, almost a daily thing for me. I'm thinking that I should change the release schedule to two weeks. Like, bi-weekly. I think that's gonna be better. And, I think now I need a set amount of pages. Um, actually, chapter five was originally going to be almost 40 pages. And I figured, I'm not gonna be able to do that within two weeks. So I decided, it's now gonna be split up between five and six. And I think the number I'm gonna go with is around 20. I think that's a good amount to go with, because it's not too much, but not too little. I think it can get, like, a good amount of story within 20 pages per chapter. Uh, that's kind of, like, a normal amount for, like, a weekly manga inside, uh, like, a Shonen Jump thing. Ugh. Mm. Of course, it's not going to be exactly 20. If you're going to have that, might as well be, like, a limitation. Speaking of that, where's my dog? My dog was just on my bed. I was tempted to just pick her up and sit, like, like sit her on the chair with me. She joins me in the podcast. As she would just make uh, gentle blowing noises. Because that's what she does with her nose. She just goes. <sighs> and occasionally she just goes. Then she'll go ahead and summon a demon and just go. <laughs> <laughs> Bad news about editing this podcast. I'm going to edit a lot of sound. Because I realize I can't just leave the sound the way it is. Sometimes I'm too loud at certain points. I'm not good at detecting sounds. I'm half deaf. Literally. Half deaf. I can only have ear hearing. And one on my ears. Just one. This is my right ear. I get everything only in the right channel. Don't ask me to make music because I wouldn't be able to. It would only sound good on one side. Assuming I'd actually... Assuming that I actually had a sense of rhythm, which I don't. I don't have any rhythm whatsoever. <laughs> uh. I wish I could fucking make music, though. That'd be fucking cool. Fucking tubular, my dude. Oh, man. I, I hope people like this on Newgrounds. 
Uh, because, like I said, this is, this podcast is going to be not only on YouTube, but also on Newgrounds as a sound thing. Uh, I want Newgrounds to be like a new place for me to sort of be known for. Um, but there's one problem, and I understand why this is. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying like, Tom Fulp, change your fucking website. I'm saying that like, I wish it was like this, but I understand why it's not. If Newgrounds uh, had an option for a live action stuff like comedy skits, short films, web series, I would just make the complete jump over at that point. Honestly. Not not even gonna lie. And I understand why it won't. Newgrounds is about animation, and if they start including live action stuff, it's gonna become... Uh, it's gonna become sort of a, like, do you have uh, one for the class sort of situation. Like, oh, you're allowing these people, what about us? And also, it kind of risks Newgrounds becoming, like, what YouTube is, a media dumpster. So, I understand. Newgrounds is primarily about animation. And also, another flaw would be, some people, like, I'm pretty sure if they're going to have live-action content, it would primarily be stuff like comedy skits, short films, stuff that actually has, like, a story to it. Uh, that isn't just, like, a regular vlog. Moderators would have to be put into decent work. And also probably wouldn't be received that well because some people have been on Newgrounds for years. Uh, they would just instantly blam stuff because we don't want live-action content here. So, you know what? I get it. It's more trouble than what it's worth. But if they did that hypothetically, I would totally just make the full jump over. Like, fuck YouTube. <laughs> Fucking shit. Uh... But anyway, one thing that I wish they would do that I think is reasonable, I wish they had a folder option in the art section. Because when you just upload art, it's just there. Everything's uh, presented in the order that is uploaded. I wish it had a gallery, like a proper gallery system, like a folder option. Um, and I also wish, you know how most of those websites, if you hit left and right on the D-pad, or there's like arrows in the side or left and right, you can scroll through different pieces of work. I wish it had that, too, because it doesn't. If you want to see someone else's work again, you have to go back to their gallery. I feel as if that alone would open so many doors if you just had a folder options and a left and right click button. Because I could see so many people doing different things like, oh, I can integrate web comics now because they'll be easier to digest and read at that point and easy to upload because now I have the folder option. I could just go ahead and set up like a folder specifically for that. That would be cool. And, you know, like, just two more additional options. Maybe, like, on the front page, there could be, like, a webcomic section. Like, featured stories or uh, these, uh, well, these stories just got updated. Go ahead and check them out. That would be cool. It feels like the only way that could work, though, is with my second idea. When you make a folder, um, you know, like, when you upload art, you can choose, like, oh, is this a sketch or not? If it's not included in the portal, which the portal is basically just how everyone is able to get their stuff out there, uh, while regular sketch stuff just remains on their page. Um, the portal is basically just this big community of creators pouring stuff into it. Uh, make it so that, like, folders can have a similar system, like a webcomic portal. Like, this is a web series, uh, like a checkmark system that says, this is a webcomic and series, this is not. This is just, like, concept art or sketches or miscellaneous art. And I feel as though that would also make it easier for the moderators to look through that kind of stuff. Look, just four little things to be added. And I'm not, like, I'm not a web designer. I'm not a fucking a person who makes websites. I'm not a coder. But I feel as if that wouldn't be that hard to do. And I would absolutely love that. I would put Alice Darkson on there. I would absolutely fucking do that. Like, please, Newgrounds, please. I understand why you can't do live action stuff. I understand. You don't have to do that. But could you please have a folder option for art, please? Come on, Tom Fulp. Do it. I'll give you a big wet kiss on the lips. And it'll sound like this. Mmm. <clears throat> Tom Fulp's life juices. <laughs> I've been mentioning a Tom Fulp a lot in this first episode. <laughs> it's pro uh, probably not going to happen again. Mentioning Tom... Because I don't want to mention Tom Fulp too much. I, like, I feel like if I mention Tom Fulp too much, it's going to come off as me being like, Oh, se notice me, senpai. Notice me. When it's not that. I just I just admire what he does. And I, I it's also easy to kind of make jokes about Tom Fulp because he's the guy who made Newgrounds. <laughs> And it's, it's all in love. Not legitimate love. 
I mean, I wouldn't want to walk over and be like, Tom, here's a ring. You know what to do. Put it on my penis. I mean, unless you wanted me to. That what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, it's not my intent, but the option's still on the table. But that, that's not what I would. It's not what I was trying to do. You know, just, just, you know, it. Mm. Uh, no shit. People are getting weirded out. I need a distraction. Uh, a momentary distraction. Oh, Jesus. Ugh. Jesus. <laughs> I wonder if people are going to actually take that seriously. There, there definitely will be. Because I see people letting themselves get so mad over something like, this person stated their opinion on Twitter. Let's kill them! It's like, there's no need to get so mad. What's the point in getting mad at something on the internet? I just don't get it. There, there are better things you could be doing with your life, you, you goober. Like, not getting mad at stuff on the internet. I can't say go outside because we're in the middle of a quarantine and I wouldn't want to risk anyone getting sick. But I'm just saying, it's 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 going to be okay. Speaking of which, the fucking going outside thing, you see these videos now of like people in different states going to different cities protesting without masks. They're all fucking close together. Fuck the six feet rule. All just waving their signs. This is tyranny. This is dictatorship. What? I just want to get a cheeseburger and McDonald's. It's like, all right, cupcake, you want to fucking risk dying? This is what you call Darwinism. You see all those people waving their flags? One guy put on the side of a truck, Jesus is my vaccine. And I'm not making fun of people who are religious. I'm, I'm, for, I'm really not. But at the same time, you're stupid. You're just stupid. Why are you outside all doubled up in a one big group without masks? You're stupid and you're probably gonna die. This is what's called natural selection and Darwinism, people. You can't reason with them. They genuinely believe the vaccines have a microchip built inside them. And if they give them the vaccine, the government's gonna see everything we're doing. Oh, and the government's... Bad for making us wear masks so that we stay safe from the virus. Virus is apparently a hoax, according to some people. Ignore the amount of people who have died. All the fucking tallies of people who have died from the coronavirus. It's just a big hoax. If we don't believe in it, it'll go away. <laughs> That's how it works. Have you seen Peter Pan, you numbskull? If he believes he can fly, he can fly. Our mistake is believing the coronavirus is real. If we all join hands, say, put, close our eyes, and just believe it's not real and saying, Kumbaya, my lord, Jesus is my vaccine, and all just go away, all the people who died from the coronavirus will break their hands out of their graves, be like, oh my god, I'm alive, thank you! Thank you, everybody, for not believing that the coronavirus is real! Is that how things work? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the coronavirus too much because everyone's already heard about it. I'm sure some people are like tired of it. I'm tired of it too. I just wanted to bring up that part because why the fuck are y'all just jumbled up in the same group like a bunch of Nimrods? Like really, people? You genuinely believe it's a hoax? All right, wait in two weeks. See what happens. In two weeks, I'm sure it's going to be like a huge scale of uh, incidents and fucking diagnosis of people with the coronavirus. And I'm just going to be sitting here going, well, what did you expect? It's like telling a kid not to put their hand on the stove when it's on. All right, Billy, when it's red and glowing, that means it's hot. Don't touch it. <laughs> what did I tell you, dumbass? You know what I forgot to do? Change the subject, because I don't want to keep talking about the fucking... That who should not be named. I'm I gotta take my vitamin. I have these gummy vitamins I got from fucking Walgreens. And I picked up my prescription, because I need to make healthy habits. And will you fucking open? I'm doing the thing, push it down and turn right, but I'm just doing this nonsense. Just clicking. This is nice. This is nice. You hear that? You fucking... This is, is this fucking good for your hearing? Fucking open! Ah, oh, fucking! Thank you. 
Not even worth it. These things don't even taste that good. Mm. That one did. Was that the cherry one? Mm. Mm, pull it over here. Oh, vitamins. They're good for me and they taste good. For the most part. Do they still make Flintstones vitamins? I keep hearing everyone making jokes about them. You know what? Don't answer that. I feel as if they are. Because if they weren't going on anymore, you would be seeing people on Facebook making posts like, Remember when stores sold these? And so you would see like the fucking, uh, the paw-shaped Cheetos, the fucking, uh, chocolate ball with a toy in it, or a piece of candy in it, uh, the fucking, the Shrek yogurt, I don't know. It's like, that would be with everything else. Flintstone vitamins would just be put in that Facebook post. Like, we remember those things exist, but move on, people. I'm sorry. You missed them. They probably weren't as good as you remember, actually. I guarantee you, if any of those food products do come back, no one's gonna say a word. Like, there's probably gonna be some people, like, a day at most. People are gonna be like, look at this thing! Probably like someone making a YouTube video be like, react to me eating this thing that was once cancelled. It's like a million views instantly. And after that, it's just going to be like, what the hell happened? It's like when Crystal Coke, was is that what it's called? Crystal Coke came back? People are like making like, remember Crystal Coke? I remember it. And then it comes back and no one said a word. I guarantee you if the Paul shaped Cheetos came back, if the fucking Shrek Go-Gurt came back, if like the fucking chocolate bowl with a piece of candy in it came back, no one would say a word. Maybe for like a day, at worst a week. Because that's how memes work. Typically go on for like a few days, maybe. There's like a high point that lasts for like an hour. It's impossible to calculate. You want to join on a meme? You just fucking join on it immediately after you see one person do it. Because you don't know when it's going on. Not that I really care about memes. I'm not really a, a meme type person. I used to be. I used to make funny little memes. I actually put a meme in a background of the normal horse... Uh, coronavirus video. I, I made these memes back in 2017 with my dog Nightmare. And I decided to put them in the background because they just so happened to be in the computer that I was using in the background. That was my old computer. I'm, I now use it as I put it in the living room so anyone can use it because I already have a new one. I have this new, far more powerful computer. It's nice. I like it. Did you see Smiling Friends on Adult Swim? The pilot from Psychic Pebbles? Or Zach Hadel? Alternatively, as that is his real name. I did. Not on TV. It's available on Adult Swim's website. You should go see it. It's really good. And I've heard a lot of people on Adult Swim are pushing for it to become a series. And I hope so, too. It really just screams if Newgrounds humor mixed with old uh, Adult Swim humor. And to me, the two are basically not necessarily the same, but similar enough that they complement each other. They were popular around the same time. Their humor is eerily similar in the sense that they're more adults and more edgy. And I love that kind of stuff. And the thing is, a Smiling French just screams entertaining, you know? And it is entertaining. I love it. Oh, man. It was a really good pilot. I hope it becomes a thing. I didn't realize Adult Swim had so much available on their website. You go on their website, they have full seasons of shows that you can watch. They just made Metal Metalocalypse the entire series. You can just watch that now. Like, no joke. Just go on Adult Swim right now and go down to their shows and you can see Metal Metalocalypse, full seasons, and like every episode is there for you to watch. I like what Adult Swim's do. I love Adult Swim. I do. Adult Swim feels like what happens if Newgrounds became, like, a TV station or, it like, Adult Swim was an independent group that remained independent but still got a budget from a bigger company. You know what I mean? That's what it feels like to me. I, I hope it stays like that. Granted, who knows? Anything could change. Uh, if I'm correct, the CEO retired? I could be wrong. Um, not too long ago, I think the CEO, uh, who was actually the CEO of Cartoon Network for a short period of time, uh, he ended up retiring recently, I think. Um, don't quote me on that. I could be wrong on that, but I hope he's doing well. And I'm not sure who's in charge of Adult Swim right now or Cartoon Network because the lady who was in charge of Cartoon Network, I forgot her name, 
Now, Christina Miller, that's her name. Uh, she actually retired or left um, Cartoon Network not too long ago. And the guy who was in charge of Adult Swim, he ended up temporarily becoming in charge of Cartoon Network for a short period of time. Uh, then he ended up retiring. So, Adult Swim and Cartoon Network just don't really have CEOs, and I'm not sure what's going to happen. It's hard to really say. It's a moment of change. We have a new generation. It's the 2020. CEOs are up and leaving. Going, bye bye. I don't, you don't need me anymore. I have this other goober here. He probably doesn't know what he's doing, but hey, it looks nice. He's got a nice suit. He's got a nice shaved head. The first thing he does is stick his hands out and shake your hand and says, Hi, my name is Hanging Well, Hanging I hope you could do a good job. It turns out he's a piece of shit. And I can't make up fake names on the spot. You have no idea how long it takes me to actually make up a fake name. Like, I will take fucking hours just thinking of something that's just basically a pun. Because I love wordplay. I like puns. And I know some people don't. I don't get me wrong. I get it. I completely get it. But I do. So shut up. It just takes me a little bit because I want to be clever. I want to be clever with my names that I give my characters. You know? I mean, it's not going to be, like, groundbreaking, obviously. I want it to at least be entertaining, you know? It's kind of a little funny thing. I've always said this. Like, if you're unconfident of, like, the stories that you make, then... Uh, which I don't know many creators who aren't and who are confident of their stories. What I mean is that even if you are or aren't confident in the stories you make, be sure to pill for like pill, fill as much personality into it as possible. Whether that be in the art, uh, the characters' expressions, names, it gives something that people can talk about. So that even if let's say hypothetically the story is not well received, people still get something they can take out of it. You know, if it has a nice art style, people can gush about that. Uh, if it has good comedy, the stories may not be good, but it, it's entertaining at least. It's funny. Uh, like, if it's an action thing that doesn't have a good story but has amazing fight scenes and choreography. You know, make sure there's at least... Um, don't focus on just the one aspect. Try and make every part of it great. So that even if the story isn't received that well, people still have something they can take out of it. And also, another piece of advice, make more stupid ideas. I love stupid things in media. And I don't mean stupid as in bad, I mean stupid as in this concept is just ridiculous, but it works, you know? A Kingdom Hearts is kind of stupid in that sense. And I know some people say like, oh, you're calling Kingdom Hearts stupid, that means you say it's bad. No, I'm not saying it's bad. When I mean stupid, I mean it's a strange concept, but I like it. It's literally what happens if Donald Duck talks to Cloud Strife. Cloud Strife, Brute, and like, I'm Cloud, you know, I'm something about Cloud. Donald Duck sitting there going, bleep, 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 And it's just entertaining. It's fun. You can say what you want about the execution. It's at least still a fun concept. You know? Fun concepts, silly ideas, stupid ideas. Just give them all to me. You could have a TV show of, like, it's an office job, but one of the, the main character doesn't have a head. And it's just a right stump. I don't know. And he doesn't talk. It's just, like, I don't know, a slapstick thing. Or he's, Actually, I'm going to shut up because that's a good idea. I kind of want to do that. I'm not sure how I do that, though. It's mine, it's trademarked, it's copyrighted, and registered. If any of you do it, I'm suing. <laughs> mm. Wow. I've been recording for almost an hour. But I kind of want to stop after an hour, you know? Almost is not good enough. Not to me, anyway. Might be for someone else. Not for me. You know why? Because I don't know. I'm rather specific with this kind of thing. I'm the anal fucking person who's just like, oh, this this number has to be even. You know? <laughs> I don't know why. It's like if I'm listening to a song on the radio, the number's got to be even. If I'm like editing something like 
colors on a piece of art that I'm making, the number has to be a multiple of five. <laughs> and I don't know why. <laughs> if I'm doing something like uh, making a YouTube video, I'd rather the number be like a clean like 10 minutes or uh, something along those lines, or 10.30. I don't know why I'm, like, fucking so specific about that sort of thing, but I just am. Uh, I don't know if it's, like, some fucking form of um, OCD, because while I... Here's the thing. I have not been fully diagnosed for something like OCD. However, a lot of the people, including my own psychiatrist have said that there's a good chance that I have it. Uh, I was diagnosed with ADD. Hence why it's hard for me to get stuff done. Uh, and everyone I've talked to, especially like my psychiatrist, my own mom, they all say, hey, you know what? There's probably a good chance you have OCD. In which, I don't know what I'd do if it turns out that is the case. I, mean, I don't know, life goes on, I guess. No one explain a couple of things because I am the kind of person where it's just, I close the door, I lock it, I walk down the steps off the porch, immediately turn back around, see if it's really closed, turn the knob a few times, go back down. Wait, is it? Because I'm that kind of person. So it is possible that I might actually have some kind of form of OCD. If not, then I don't. But if I do, I do. It's not really going to change much in my life besides just the realization that I have it and I could probably get proper treatment for it. Uh, I don't know, I'll talk to my psychiatrist about that next time. I actually, um, when's the next time I'm talking to them? Sometime in May, I think it's the 20th. My psychiatrist, ever since I've been talking to them, my mental health has been getting better. Also because I was prescribed medication, I was prescri uh, prescribed Prozac, uh, and it's been helping me a lot with my mood. Uh, I'm the kind of person that will let stuff rattle in my brain, and I sometimes get unnecessarily frustrated at certain things I really shouldn't be. Like, I could be looking at, like, a person's profile picture and just not like, oh, that looks like a smug person and just get unnecessarily frustrated. And it doesn't happen as much, and I'm glad it doesn't. Thank you, Prozac and, and fucking my, and my psychiatrist. I'm not fucking my psychiatrist. Now all I need to do is take... They gave me a piece of paper. It's right here, actually. Like, months ago. To find a fucking therapist... Yeah, good luck with that right now, because quarantine. I think I'm just going to wait till all this is over. I don't know when it's going to be over. For all I know, it's probably not going to be for like a fucking year. Oh, please let it be over soon. Oh, Jesus. I can definitely say my mental state's gotten better. Uh, I'm a little more productive not as much as I could be. I always beat myself up because just like I could be getting like everything done if I work every second of my life. But I also realize that's an unhealthy way of thinking. I do realize one thing. The Prozac makes me drowsy. Hence why I take it before I head to bed instead of in the morning. Because if I take it in the morning, I'm just going to sleep for the rest of the day. Honestly, that's not good. Eight hours of sleep. Wake up. Oh, it's been like four hours. And apparently I am a snorer. Jesus Christ. That's the only problem. My sleep schedule is fucked. I actually did the exact same thing today. I woke up. I did a couple of things. I went to bed for like three hours. I woke up and felt terrible. Not physically. I mean mentally. Like, god damn, why did I do that? Why did I let it happen? Why? Why do I let these things happen to me? I just have a regular bottle of water. Because soda and alcohol are dehydrants. And I want my bladder to scream in agony, uh, obviously. <laughs> I want my bladder to be like, stop, please, enough. <laughs> As I'm just like, no bladder, you need to take more. <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. All right, <laughs> it's been an hour. <laughs> I got the fuck.
fucking squeaky laugh going. <laughs> <coughs> oh, fuck. G -g Goodbye. Fuck.